Hi everyone, uh, I'm Serena Martin and we are here at Phillips Collection at Fall High Point Market in High Point, North Carolina. And you're watching A Student's Perspective. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Vanessa. And you're watching A, a Student's Perspective. Perspective. That was cute. Hi, girls. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Good. How's the market been? been? It's good. First day, so we're really Amazing. excited. Yeah. First day, first market, so awesome. really pretty excited. exciting. Yeah. yeah, first time here. So. Awesome. Yeah. so what do you think so far? Easy to navigate? No, I would not say so. <laughs> Definitely yeah, not. No. But exciting. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. We really want to get every opportunity we can here and just look at everything we possibly can. Okay. So awesome. very excited. So you probably have a wide range of people that you're interviewing while you're here, mm -hmm. right? Different yes. companies, brands, designers. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk with High Point Market the Authority as well? They put on the event. Do you yes. get to talk to them? Oh, um, not, not yet. Not, not yet. Yeah. Okay. Put it on your list. Very okay. great. <laughs> So, um, could we just start off by you giving us uh, some background information on you? Sure. Um, I'm Serena. Um, I work in marketing. So we are here at Phillips Collection, one of the brands that I work with. So I handle their marketing and events. Uh, and so we're doing three events in three days, which is kind of fun. Um, but they are a great brand as we are sitting in their showroom here. We're at the IHFC, which is the... Um, one of the biggest buildings here in High Point at High Point Market. We're in the Commerce Wing on the second floor, C202. Uh, but well, you can find them online, phillipscollection.com. <laughs> Nice. Um, could you also give us a little bit of background on like schooling and how you sure. started out in the business sure. and how you got to where you are now? Sure. I went to school at, um, at San Francisco State University for interior design. I graduated with a bachelor's in interior design. Um, I worked in residential. I worked in hospitality. And then I moved into, I would say, working for brands and manufacturers and really found that sort of niche for myself. Like I have a very like outgoing personality, kind of like you girls, you know, never met somebody I didn't like. Um, and it was just sort of a natural evolution of my career and I will tell you that that career directions are never linear I mean you guys are going to school for interior design right yes. interior architecture, interior architecture. Okay. Yes. and so you think you know what you're gonna do right and sometimes that happens and sometimes you just start on a path and you get to the evolution of where you're at so I'm 10 15 years into my career and now I focus on brand marketing and helping people to really craft and tell their story Phillips collection has been in business for 40 years but they're still trying to help people understand what they do like this is just a a small sampling of some of the things that they do. They travel the world as kind of like explorers and inventors, and they're always creating new, exciting products, organic products, um, sustainable products, and something new um, is always kind of surprising me. So I'm very fortunate to work with them. That's amazing. So what led you to switch from design to marketing? Sure. Um, I would say that I got laid off working in design for hospitality because in 2009, there was what's called a recession. It's kind of like what we are going through right now in the pandemic is where a lot of people are investing in certain types of jobs. Yes. It's just tougher. You know what right. I mean? The pandemic has done crazy things with everybody's schedule, right? But um, so I went um, to work for a retailer and then I went to work for a manufacturer and I just sort of like took to it like a duck to water. I was working for Dual Modern at the time. I worked for them for almost 10 years. And um, the first trade show that I went to, I kind of ran circles around the rest of the sales team. I just kind of like absorbed everything that needed to be done and had fun doing it. And then the owner at the time, uh, Luis, he said, this is so your field. This is yeah. what you should be doing full time. And so he transitioned me from like sales into marketing. And so I never looked back. And so here I am, you know, 10, 15 years later. Um, and it's actually just the evolution of where I'm going with my career. And I, I can't be happier. So, yeah. Do you say that your design 
like your background in design help shape who you are as like in marketing today? Well, I would say that um, having a background in interior design helps me understand the design industry, helps me understand product. Um, I'm really good at marketing. I think that comes naturally, but being able to have that design side and understand the design community and how to foster the design community, I think is very crucial right. to that. So going to school for design and understanding what designers and students like yourself go through, understanding that I think is very crucial to where I am in marketing because I kind of specialize in home and home decor and furniture. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't didn't have a background in interior design, I think it might be it might be not as relative. It may not have made as much sense to me. I might be focused on the wrong things. And so I'm I'm very fortunate that I have a degree and that it led me to where I am now. So earlier you talked a little bit about how the pandemic changed yeah. for, uh, everything for you. Can you tell us a little bit about sure. like um, you navigating through? Sure. Um, so I used to work, I would say, for one company, right, running their marketing. So uh, as the pandemic, some of the things that happen when companies are hurting or, you know, they don't have as many people coming to shows is that they usually cut their marketing department. And so a couple of positions that I was in that was full time were eliminated. It's a nice way of saying that they can't afford to pay your salary. <laughs> right. Um, and it does happen. And so really, I just tried to stay positive, diversify, work my network, talk to people. And people already knew that I was good at great things for one brand. And so I basically started a consulting business. And in September of this year, I celebrated one year of having my own consulting business, which is it's great because a lot of companies fail in the first year. So I'm very, I'm very happy and very excited. That's amazing. And um, I'm getting to talk with you girls today, which is sort of an honor. So I'm glad. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you so much. That's That's very it's very been impressive. exciting. Yeah. Producing six events for three brands at this market is also a testament. You just have to be positive and take every opportunity. You know, never know who you're going to meet. I know that, like, you guys probably have business cards for yourself, right? Yes. But you never know who you're going to meet. How do you give them out? How do you how do you approach people? I mean, you ha just have to be, you know, be yourself, I would say. Look for opportunities and just be genuine. And you never know, you know what I mean? Who you could meet in the bathroom and give them Tylenol could yeah, be the person right. that could be your future boss. Who you meet in an elevator could be your future boss or your boss's boss. And they'd say, I saw you talking to that person. You just presented yourself very well. So... You never know. You right. never know. So, okay. it's a small little fishbowl. That yeah. we, that, you know, honestly, there is probably hundreds of showrooms here in High Point Market, mm -hmm. but everyone knows one another, and it is a very tight-knit community. So, always present yourself professionally. Have business cards, right? <laughs> and just be yourself. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to do, but I just feel like... Sometimes, I, right? Yeah, I, I'm a pretty outspoken person. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. Sometimes I feel like I, I withdraw just okay. because I don't want to act a certain way. Well, you probably don't want someone to say no, but you never know. I mean, the people who are the most successful in this industry didn't get there because everybody said yes. Yeah, right. they got there because they kept asking, mm -hmm. and that's what you have to do. Yeah. Give someone your business card. It's nice to meet you. Here's my card, and I'll say, "Oh, it's a really nice card." Be like, you know, if you ever need an intern, or I'd love to know more about it, or maybe I can spend, you know, five minutes learning about your business. The easiest way to meet anyone is ask them about what they do. Everyone wants to talk about themselves, okay. especially on the brand side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this is our first market, like we awesome. said a little earlier. Do you have like any advice about how to navigate sure. here? I would say that. Um, um, talking with people and planning things out in advance is a very good way to do it. Also, be giving yourself some time to be a little bit spontaneous. So, if you book yourself too close together, you never have the ability to sort of like have those spontaneous moments where you're like you're running over. You know what I mean? If you have to keep going so quickly, you'll you'll miss the forest for the trees, as they say. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's one thing. Wear comfortable shoes. That's another <laughs> thing. You have to wear comfortable shoes. Learning that. Bring band aids. Take vitamins. You know what I mean? Drink water. Yes. So those. Those are the kind of things, you know, chips of the trade kind of thing. Um, and then work with people that you care about, you know, thank people, be genuine. So those are sort of things. But I think you girls are probably be great at that. And then thank have you. fun thank while you're there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's such a small window of time before it's over, before the market is over. So experience everything, like absorb it like a sponge, and you know what I mean? And then take those experiences and follow up with them. Send thank you cards, handwritten thank you cards. I still send handwritten thank you cards to everyone that I meet or I work with. That's a good tip. And put your business card in there. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, and there's always so like cute thank you cards out there nowadays that can be more about who you are. Like if you like something that's more boho, you like something more mid-century modern. So yeah. describe yeah. yourself a little bit more through it. So Yeah, of course you definitely can. Especially your business card should be a representative of who you are. Yeah. You're probably not ready to have your own website, but when right. you are and when you want that, come to me because I can help you with your website. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you still marketing? No, I, really know. I help people on the weekends. Like 
outside of what I do is like I'll help friends. Like I've done two art artist websites. I've done a hotel website for someone that bought a hotel. So you know, just just helping people. That's what you do. Yes. I am minoring in business okay. as well. So I've been taking I've been taking marketing classes, okay. and I awesome. think it's very helpful. Like as. I feel like I could put my design into yeah. marketing. I think I had a little bit of a hard time grasping marketing like as a whole. Because it's a pretty big yeah. class, but yeah. um, I think like as a designer going into marketing and like like making a brand for myself and yeah. like, putting myself out there, I think is going to be super interesting. Uh, but, I mean, um, that's where things are leading. Every person mm-hmm. wants to be their own brand, yeah. right. who they are, and tell their own story. Whether they are a manufacturer or an individual designer or an individual personality, you know. I got to inter- I got to sit in on an interview today with Miranda Kerr, the supermodel. Someone was interviewing her, and I got to take pictures and That's behind amazing. the scenes. She was lovely, and she started out as a supermodel. Wow. You know what I mean? And the way she got into product design, I think it was because her dad was a developer. So you know that sort of thing. Yeah. She evolved her brand. Right. Was it? How was the transition from design, like interior design, to marketing? Was it a bigger transition, or did, did was it was easy for you? It, I mean, it was. There was a learning curve, I would say, because I was doing something different. So instead of designing for, I would say, a design firm and doing some of the things that you do every day, from rendering to AutoCAD to samples to sample boards, right? You know what I mean? To working on core marketing for a brand. So there's still the same elements. There's still like the prep work you have to do, whether you're presenting and creating an event or you're doing an individual design. So I would say there's still that level. So you want to make sure that regardless of what you're doing, that you're doing it well, that you have great follow through, and that you're very professional, and you don't over promise and under deliver, that's a big thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. You say you're gonna have something done in a cer- certain window of time, make sure you can do it, mm-hmm. or give them more of a window, so it gives yourself some time as okay. well, because yeah. when you start rendering, right, or you start designing, sometimes things take longer than yeah. you think, than you expected. Right, exactly. So. Do you have like a favorite project that like comes to mind? Favorite or? project? I mean, I love High Point Market, mm-hmm. and I'm really fortunate that I have to that I get to work with three bands at this market. A lot of times, it's usually just one, so I'm very fortunate that I'm able to do that. Um, the work that I'm doing with Phillips Collection has been incredible. I mean, everything from stuff that I'm doing on their website to learning more about who they are as a company and as brand because they're a family-owned business third generation working in this family so they have great history and insight into the industry and they've been very successful so so it's not that they're a new business i don't need to tell them how to do anything they need to tell me what they do well and i need to help share that with their audience so yeah that's amazing we have a very strong background in wood and let me show you our origins collection I hope you can appreciate the scale of these majestic one-of-a-kind pieces. And you select the exact one you want. If you select TH5203, we don't send you TH5204. We've developed an instantaneous inventory system. The minute a piece is claimed, it disappears from the screen. You get and participate in the selection of your home treasure. We offer graystone finishes, perfect brown, natural. We have a bleach. We have a vast selection of coffee tables and side tables and a warehouse full of nothing but consoles, our pride and joy. To my right, you'll see the root of a lychee tree. We have three of these uh, being shown. We have dozens in our other warehouse. It's very difficult to bring this product to market. Imagine this upside down with the roots growing underground. We have to first dig up the roots, then cut them free with a chainsaw. But with a lychee tree, with these very complicated and intertwined roots, they often encase a stone. When you're using a chainsaw and it hits a stone, the chain breaks. So we bought a decommissioned 1954 fire engine in the north of Thailand, a two-man pumper. And we, when we are harvesting lychee tree roots, we go out there and we blast away all of the stones in the path of the chainsaw, and we're among the few people that can bring this product to market. In fact, our website has a video that shows us out and about with our fire truck blasting away. I have to admit it's fun, but it was a great practical solution to bringing unique products that are guaranteed to cause a conversation. And now we go from the old to the very old. In front of me, you'll see 
a sampling of our petrified wood in this warehouse. Petrified wood is five to 10 million years old. Pieces of wood that fell or covered by lava or something that present, prevented them from being exposed to the oxygen where they would deteriorate. And for millions of years, water coursing past these trees had the cellular material replaced by mineral material. So the exact structure of a tree was transformed from wood into stone. The black had a very heavy carbon flow. The white has more quartz in it. And you can learn a little bit about the history that only time can create. To my right, some of our console tables of golden acacia. We finish them in gray stone. We seek out the sap lines to get the darker finish. We have a blonder finish when we avoid the sap line. These are roots from plentiful, unthreatened trees that we get when highways are widened, when hospitals are being built, when land is being cleared for schools. Our pieces are not perfect, and we delight in that fact. We are not asking trees to be cut down. We are rescuing and repurposing those that have been. In front of me now, you'll see some of our larger amethyst pieces. These are called cathedrals, where they are have a, a beautiful dome to them. They're quite large and quite hard to get and quite a conversation piece. We have them, we've learned, in a citrine color. This yellowish color is achieved when you apply this purple amethyst, a variety of quartz, to 3,000 degrees Kelvin. And after a few days, it might turn this purple this to, into a beautiful yellow. We don't know for sure, so we usually test a sample of the quartz, and if we like the result, we then go ahead and bring it up to 3,000 Kelvin. Our partners in Brazil are amazing, and they have taught us how minerals behave, and we've taught them how to present them so that consumers are happy with the end result. Look at these spectacular artifacts. Who would ever forget a house that had this in the living room. And one more digression, because this is very special for us. I want to talk to you about Atlas. Atlas was a titan god. He went up against his father Zeus, the Olympian god, and lost. And as his punishment, he was tasked with holding the heavens for eternity. He is often depicted holding the earth on his shoulder. We found discarded treasures that no one but I think a Phillips collection I could find and decided this has to be rescued and celebrated. And in partnership with our amazing local Thai artisans came up with this Atlas collection where we find a discarded piece that is special. We mount it with arms going all the way through. This is one single piece and it's a two-sided sculpture that celebrate something that wouldn't have found a home otherwise. Um, so some of the other things I'm doing outside of working with Phillips Collection is that Unique Loom, I'm helping them with a panel event. Um, so it's called Bubbles and Branding. So we're working with um, a celebrity designer. Her name is Sabrina Soto. You've probably seen her on CBS. She has her own television show. So she's fantastic. You have to come. Um, and so Unique Loom has a really great uh, rug showroom. Uh, they're at Suites of Market Square. So that was fantastic. And then you can find all their rugs online. Um, and then also doing an event uh, with Zuo. We have two events. We have a panel event where we're talking about um, digital technology and how designers can help to like create better presentations with rendering and technology. Uh, and then we're doing a really fun event tonight, which is 46, which I hope you'll join us, um, called the Bohemian Experience. So working with different brands that don't, I would say, conflict with each other. Uh, that's another thing is that um, definitely if you're going to work with multiple people, make sure that you're transparent and let them know so that they're comfortable with that. Um, it's like working with uh, two different people in the same house, you know what I mean? If you're doing a design for the husband and you're, and you're doing something else for the wife, just no, make sure that they know. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So um, can I ask you girls some questions? Yes. Yeah, sure. So when do you girls graduate? Um, I will be graduating this spring. Okay. Actually, I'm a senior this year, okay. so it's really exciting, but I'm not at all sure what I will be doing <laughs> okay. afterwards. But interior architecture. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. You as well. I am a junior. Okay. I'm interior architecture as well. I'll be okay. graduating next year. Okay. And so what do they teach you in interior architecture? Tell me a little bit about your program. 
Um, so right now our project is an adapter reuse project. So okay. it's um, a building in our town. So it's in Archibald, PA, okay. where Marywood is in Scranton, PA. So okay. um, only like maybe like 20 minutes away, but it's an old oil house that okay. um, they use for mining. And so we're deciding to uh, change that into um, we're changing that into like something that they want for the community, so we actually so get, they're modernizing it yes. with your designs for yeah. interior architecture. So they that's so cool. Yeah, they contacted us, so that was really exciting. What a great opportunity! Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. yeah. So are you going to have it in your portfolios? Yes. Awesome. Yes. And so, so cool. what is going into the design process? Tell me, I'm I'm curious. What do you have to um, do? So right now we're like kind of getting a hold of the site. So okay. there's three buildings on the site, and um, we're trying to connect them and make that area kind of like a little hub for okay. there's a huge trail that runs okay. through um, Scranton. It's the Lackawanna Heritage Trail. Okay. So we're trying to so use it's gonna it for be more that. community public yeah. space. Yeah. Right. So That's awesome. They're thinking like coffee house type thing. Very cool. So Very um, cool. maybe a little museum about what it was before. And so, so is it anything right now? Is it open to the public or anything no. right now? So, yeah. Okay. So it's like the city is owning it, but it's not open to the public okay. as of right now. But that's like their hopes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, so cool. So and where are you with the project right now? We just started, so it's a year. It's our year-long project this year, Amazing. which is really exciting. Amazing. We've never done that before, so okay. we'll have like a little extra time to do it. Okay. Um, yeah. So right now we're kind of just in like the um, I'd say the planning phase. Yeah, right? the diagramming and like okay. planning phase. You're so, working with a local architect. Yeah. That's very um, cool. He. So we do actually have clients, but. Um, We'll like, they'll take our plans to a different architect, hopefully, okay. um, if they it's like. Great experience. Yeah, if they like our design. So it's awesome. really cool to be working with a client. Like we haven't really got to do that. Hope yet. you're doing lots of before and after pictures because yes. you have to do before and after pictures. I mean, social media is your friend, especially when you're a designer, regardless of what you're doing, you definitely need to document things and do before and after pictures because everybody loves that. Right. So, so. I'm doing something different. I'm wow. in a semester long project, um, and we are doing a healthcare clinic okay. and it's uh, located in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. It You're updating is, it? Um it, it's a fictitious okay. sort of okay. um, design program. It's for IIDA competition. Awesome. Um, so what we have to do is we have to design a mental health clinic for the ages of 2 to 18. Okay. So a pretty ra uh, okay. broad range. So it has to be multicultural. It has to have lots of equality elements. It's right. got to be fun for kids. So right. I think lots of safety services and probably sustainability because of kids, that sort of thing. Right. What so we're trying project? to incorporate things like natural light, uh, um, like trees and plants and like lots of natural elements. Of, I love it. Colors. Very organic. And, right. Lots of organic. And That's fine. Like colorful so semester things. long. And where yes. are you guys with this project? We just finished our floor plans okay. and our narratives for the entirety of the project. Awesome. So we're final. We have like our layout of the um clinic but right now we're just still fit, like making sure making sure everything is perfect kind of like which rooms would be suitable for what right. okay I, I did something similar in school so you're reminding me of the different things <laughs> that I got to work on too this is so useful I'm so proud of you girls oh, thank, thank you, you. Um, it, are you guys working together as like a group or do you all no. have individual we all have individual programs okay. I think it's really amazing how we all get the same layout mm -hmm. like they gave us this box and said, okay, design it, and each, we, there's 10 of us, we all did a completely different thing. So it's like a design challenge. Yes. Yeah. Right. yes it so is everybody gets to show their own talent and what they're focused on. I mean, I hope that you can showcase this in the best way possible, because this is really going to help you when you get out of school with your portfolio and going for your first jobs and being able to talk about this experience. Even though it's fictitious, it's still something that you design. Right. So I wish you, you girls the best of luck with your Thank career. You. Thank You're going to go so far. Thank Just you. Enjoy Every, every minute of it. Don't let anything stop you. For sure. Thank For sure. You. Um, is there any advice that if you can go back and give your student self that you would? Uh, my student self. I would say probably try not to rush too much because everyone wants to grow up too fast. I would say definitely that is the biggest thing. Like I was very fortunate. I did go to Europe and take like do a semester experience. So I would say doing something like that was very valuable to me. It's a little tough with the pandemic, but the fact that I got to see a, a larger worldview. So I would say 
experiencing different, you know, races, uh, nationalities, ethnicities, cultures, I think is a big thing, regardless of where, the, where you guys are located. But being open to that experience and, and meeting new people all the time, I think is great. What you guys are doing now, if I had done that when I was your age, just in school, like I don't even know where I would be now, right? Uh, maybe I would be working with you. Maybe I would be a professor. Like, <laughs> Some of the things is it definitely just don't be too much of in a rush, and um, and you know your life is long and vast, and you have time, so definitely like absorb it all like a sponge and enjoy it, and don't rush and don't stress too much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. That's the best thing. You yeah. said you studied abroad, correct? Yeah, I did a study a semester in London and a semester in Paris. Oh, what was wow. that like? Incredible. Um, that, well, I would say London was a little bit more difficult. It happened during 9-11, so I'm telling you how old I am. Um, but yes, um, so that was, it was complicated. Um, the one thing I did learn is that at the time we were in an international school, and even though we were going through as Americans 9-11, they still wanted us to get our homework done because the value of what they were teaching us is that there has been conflict going on throughout time, mm -hmm. and you can't let what is going on everywhere derail where your future is going to go. And so that was hard at the time, but I still completed the program and was able to learn a lot from it, and I got to go to a multicultural school with people from all over the world and different languages and stuff, so Paris was fun as well. I spent a lot of time with um, meeting people from all over, um, not only France, but Algeria and Tunisia and Morocco, and so it's a very multicultural city, and I spoke a little bit of French, and so I learned a lot, but it was very cool. Yeah. So, but I would say that definitely if you get a chance to travel, even if it's short trips, I would say if it's safe, go for it, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, take your friends with you, you know, be safe, you know, make sure that you're controlling your passport and your things, <laughs> those sorts of things. So Next semester I'm studying abroad in Italy. And you're going to have such a fantastic time. Uh, I hope and so. I would say that don't rush the experience either because you always think you're going to come back. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I have more time. I'm going to come back. That's always your goal. And a lot of times your life takes you in a direction. And sometimes you don't have time to go back. So try and, like, absorb it as much as you can. If, like, you're, like, on this weekend, I'm going to go do this. And I'm going to take a train and go someplace. Because it's very easy to get around in Europe. Try it if you can afford it. Okay. All right? Just be safe about it. Right. You know? Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I want to give you guys this as we wrap up. So this is uh, the Phillips Collection seatbelt chair. These are for your business cards. So I know you guys have business <laughs> yeah. cards. You can put them on your desk. But these are their iconic uh, seatbelt chairs. I think they come in like eight colors. Kendall um, Jenner even has one at her house. So um, I know she's got, I think, a gold one or maybe this one. And this one was also in the Hunger Games. So oh, really? some of the things about Phillips Collection That's is that they so have cool. been in business for 40 years and they've been creating like beautiful iconic style they also do some things that are kind of fun so enjoy oh, thank you so, thank much. You so much um, is there anything that we missed that you would like to talk um, about? So as my business has like evolved over time, um, I've taken on more clients. And so right now I have like three licensing clients that are like private interior designers or artists. And then I also work with multiple brands. So I would say there's a big difference in working for one company or consulting with lots. And some of the things that I've found is that um, you definitely want to make yourself available, but not too available, right? So that's the biggest thing is that you can't work 24 seven. You know, you set boundaries with your clients. If you don't want to work on the weekends, or maybe if you do for a certain project, make sure they understand that. That's a key element, I would say, with, with your design business or with, you know what I mean, a consulting business. So I would say that sort of thing is setting boundaries is probably key. Um, and for me, just making sure that, like, uh, I'm transparent and letting each of the, the people that I know, that I work with multiple people, so they understand, like, what my deliverables are or where my focus is and just, like, do, touching base with them. Um, I also set, like, lots of reminders for myself. I do everything in Google Docs or I would say cloud-based so that you can work on it anywhere because I'm always on the go. So those are some of the things. I mean, technology has really helped, I would say, uh, myself, like, up my game, uh, you know what I mean? And I, I function at a very high level. Um, but I'm definitely always on the go. So I would say having those cloud-based technologies, I think, really helps. Um, and then I use a, com a company called Wave App. It's like, that's how I invoice people. Okay. And so it's free. So if you guys do your very first job as an interior designer and you need to invoice people, you look up Wave App. So I use that as well. And it also helps with sending recurring invoices if you have a retainer client. Most of my clients are on retainer okay. uh, because hourly doesn't work because I, you know, I work all the time. But for them, it also doesn't work. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other questions for me? So is there a, in your experience, is there a difference between um, interviewing yeah. a designer and a brand? Well, I would say absolutely. The, the designer clients that I work with um, sometimes can be, um, I would say, 
sometimes can be a little bit more like detail oriented and a brand can have so much going on they're not as detail oriented it's like they they want it the broad strokes they want the broad strokes that sort of thing whereas okay. a designer sometimes um, it's all about them and what they're creating and what they're working on so they usually are more detail oriented but I think that that comes from the fact that they do their own design I would say even for you guys when you interview a designer it's going to be different than when you interview a brand right. so when you interview a brand when you interview them, ask them about themselves they want to talk about themselves they want to learn about what it is that they're good at for sure but designers would rather talk about their projects and their clients manufacturers want to talk about their products and their brand okay. so that's some of the things so you might have a different set of questions for yourself in working with designers because I think you're going to interview someone um, tomorrow right designers yeah. that's different so I would say every manufacturer is going to be different um, I did want to learn one thing that you know when I first started out in this, this uh, industry that'll make you laugh so uh, Jennifer Bringle if you ever see this you'll laugh about this as well she's um, in publishing so my very first um, time I had to send editorial to someone I sent all these great pictures right I sent all these great pictures and she emails me back in one sentence she says you know that we only do outdoor right and I sent her indoor, so do your homework, right? Regardless of it is whether you're you're interviewing a brand, you're interviewing a personality, or you're interviewing anyone, check out their website, go to their about section. And if someone doesn't have an about section on their website, tell them that you'll help them write it because it's a good way to get into marketing. That's what I did, right? But definitely learn a little bit about who they are and then ask them to talk about themselves. So that's my two cents. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So this is our first market, and this is our first time interviewing someone. No way. Um, You girls are great at this. How could this be your first time? My first time, but our first time interviewing since COVID. Okay. In person. Yeah, first Um, in-person interview for sure. Right. Um, So I think learning at market is like... So how social media, like how people can pro- promote themselves on social media. Right. But um, where can we find you on social media? So, I mean, you can find me on Instagram or you can find me on Facebook or you can find me on LinkedIn. I would say definitely everybody needs each of those platforms, I would say. I'm not as much on Twitter, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and not on Snapchat or, uh, I would say, TikTok because I don't do a lot of videos. <laughs> but um, I'd say definitely Facebook, you know, Serena Martin. Uh, Instagram is Martin underscore Serena. Um, and then LinkedIn, I think it's Serena Martin 24-7. Uh, that's my email. It's Serena Martin twenty four seven at gmail.com. So if anybody wants to um, and wants to find me, they can reach out to me. If anybody wants me to look at your resume or talk to you about business or about the, your career, I help mentor people. I love the students' perspective. I love your professor Stephen. We've worked together for a number of years. I feel very fortunate to be on your show, especially your first interview. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so, so much. I really absolutely, appreciate absolutely. this. Absolutely. And I wish you guys the best. You guys are going to go like rocket ships. Straight oh, to the moon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, thank you, Serena, for speaking with us today. It definitely was a great first interview, and I really enjoyed meeting you and hearing what you had to say. It was great. Um, so, uh, I'm Katie. And, and I'm Vanessa. And you are, you are watching A Student's Perspective. Um, if you liked our conversation today, like, share, and comment any questions you may have. And uh, stay tuned for next week when the conversation continues. Thank you guys.